Um, I know those are the crazies, but like, it's something like 70% of people who've read all 14 books think the show is as good or better than the books. Video that uh, I don't know how to make. It's the first time I can say that in being on YouTube for almost three years. And I'll get into the reasons why. Last night, Amazon did something that I find really kind of curious, and that is it tacked on a season two quasi teaser trailer on episode eight of its first season. To me, I think this is going to be exploited to somehow represent watch hours that were abysmal for season one. And somehow, in my opinion, Amazon is going to misrepresent and conflate this with people actually watching more than they did just to check out this trailer, this clip. The article comes to us from Tor.com. A scene from season two of The Wheel of Time is hiding in plain sight. I watched this live with Prophet of the Dragon, Nerdporeal Lifeform, Alex from the White Cloaks. What if he isn't evil? He's 100% he evil. It's a Trolloc. What if he's just... <laughs> there was a lot of stunned disbelief at what we saw, not just because of how dark it was, how terrible the CGI for the troll looked, but also the perspective that was chosen for what is such an important scene, the dark friend social. Now in the book, this is built up as this malevolent evil masquerade ball where people are going out of their way to conceal who they are for obvious reasons. Now, if you're aligned with these dark forces that have infiltrated every aspect of life in Robert Jordan's world, the last thing you want to do is be someone who's caught, captured, tortured, and can reveal the identity of any one of your fellow co-conspirators. What does Rafe Judkins do? What's fascinating about this scene is that it literally does take the dialogue said by a certain character in the book, who we're still not even sure who the hell this is on screen, uses it word for word, but puts it in a context which utterly devalues the scene. Add to this, this little girl. I don't know I liked you. Are you going to kill her now? Kill her? Feed her to the trolley? There's just a little girl hanging outside one of the most important secret meetings of the most powerful and important, dangerous people in the world who can just burst into the middle of their conference room. The scene then has this little girl under the table on her knees looking around at all the attendees and very obvious signs of who they are and where they're from, including one very ridiculous one <laughs> of the Sean Chan. We also got into it live last night on Prophet of the Dragon's channel, where apparently they're going to have the Black Aja. <laughs> I'm going to say it's Leandrin. Uh, melted down her serpent ring to make the ugliest, stupidest looking black marble <laughs> ring you could ever imagine. And because the costumers and, and the thinkers behind this show are who they are, Apparently, this ring has to be big enough to fit over these black leather gloves. As if wearing a costume or we're, we're, while wearing a very obvious I said I ring would even be necessary. But there I go, being a divisive book fan. Now, where this trailer gets disturbing to me and, and where I've actually tried to carefully craft what I'm about to say is... When this dark one, I, I, again, is he Ishmael? Is he not? Is he Balzaman? Th does this show even give a shit? Do they even know the difference? Takes this little girl and starts treating her like it's bring your daughter to work day at the Forsaken or the bad guy social event. He starts telling her all the kind of things that you would if you didn't have a child's best interest at heart if you were a stranger. Are you following me? Especially when this really disturbing and, in my opinion, disgusting allegory for child exploitation is carried to the dark one picking up this little girl and then having her pet a trollic. What if he isn't evil? 
He's a hundred percent evil. It's a Trolloc. He's just hungry. Now, those of you who haven't read the books, a Trolloc is essentially a cobbled together Frankenstein like beast. It can be parts of animals, parts of men. They're pure evil. They're cannibalistic, mindless killers that are used by the dark forces, by the dark one, by the forsaken, by the shadow spawn, and controlled <laughs> by horrible, disgusting, evil Myrdral. This show tells little girls that despite what you see in front of you, that this is a stranger, that they're dangerous, that they've hurt other people, maybe even children, that maybe they're really just misunderstood, that maybe they're just hungry. Do you see what I'm talking about with normalizing things, with creating what to me is at best an incredibly fumbled allegory and at worst an outright in my opinion support of exploiting and manipulating the most innocent and vulnerable there are a lot of things that i were expecting with season two mostly meaning very little of the source material considering that we've been told this is going to cover not just the second book the great hunt and the third book the dragon reborn which are a total of 1400 pages or so but there's going to be an entirely made up storyline to make sure that rosamund pike and daniel henney the number one and number two on the show's actor call sheets are continually in the show what we again didn't get from the producers from the showrunner, from the writer, in any of this teaser advanced season two video is any of Rand Althor, The Dragon Reborn, Matt Cawthon, or Perrin Abiara. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. You have a good one.